today's demo is on the what you got assignment and what you need to do is find an object around your house uh, that you'd like to draw. Make sure it has some interest to it, um, that it's not too plain. Uh, it could be a lamp, a vase, uh, even something like this mouse might be a little bit too plain. Uh, and what you've got to plan on is that you're going to do some shading, you're going to do the contour drawing, you're going to draw the outline, you're going to fill in some details. Uh, so find uh, your object and try to get a lamp or something that can really shine a light on your object. And as you can see, it does change how you're going to draw with the shadows, um, what part are what part is highlighted. So once you are comfortable with what you plan to draw, you want to look at it. So you don't have to be necessarily a, a fine artist, but you do need to look at measuring with your eyes, uh, just seeing the, the changes in the handle, how that might look. Uh, for this assignment, I'm not looking for a beautiful drawing necessarily, but that you've taken some time to uh, and spent some time making it look as best as you can, adding the details, uh, not being messy, not scribbling, and that you're you're trying to capture all the details of this uh, object. And in my case, it's this mug. And so what you're going to start with, and don't be afraid to do light drawings uh, as guides to start and then go back in and darken that in. So th there's no right or wrong answer if this makes sense to you. So my point of view is more downward where I can see the inside than maybe the camera is showing. The camera is showing, you know, a highlight here. You do want to shade your drawing, not just do the outline. So if I'm looking at the curve of the top of it, it's going to look different from uh, everyone's perspective. But from my perspective, the curve, I'm just following that curve around and it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, it, it's probably more like this. Maybe that's too much and that's OK. That's what erasers are for. Uh, and, you know, if you do it lightly, it won't distract you from uh, the rest of your drawing. Now I can see inside there's some uh, and there's some thickness to the the rim of the mug. So you want to capture that too, that it's uh, it changes direction a little bit as it goes around. So you want to capture that thickness. And then inside there's some lines that are going along here. And I can just kind of start to push those uh, in. And then I'm going to look and I see that there might be a little lip, but what I see, it's actually starting lower than connecting right up here. What I see, it's starting here. So I'm going to start there and, and just sketch in real light this curve. So I'm watching the curve as I'm going and just trying to match it. And again, just some light sketch lines will help you um, when you want to come back. Now I can see the base just barely and it's quite dark so, and you can add shadow so that might be something that you rough in how the shadow works shadow and light and dark areas really make your object come to life and look real uh, so we we don't necessarily have to make it look perfect but you want to give someone else the impression of what it looks like what you're representing and that's the important part in our drawings for this program, for the graphic design program. So I can just see this kind of curving. So I'm I'm notifying, uh, noticing and identifying all the different types of curves. You know, there's actually a little bit of a curve coming this way because this is a handmade uh, coffee mug. And I would say, you know, just eyeballing the distance uh, from here to here, the handle would probably come out here. In my angle, I'm seeing almost like a side view of this handle and I'm going up and then it changes because of the point of view I have. I'm seeing more of the top than, than the bottom. 
and it almost kind of comes together right here as the edge of this mug handle. And again, you can uh, sketch rough, rough it in as I'm doing here and then go back with uh, pressing harder and, and erasing the, the lighter lines. And because what I'm seeing is that this handle is actually coming right up against the lip. If you look at it as a flat versus the dimension, you don't assume, just look at what your actual uh, piece looks like. And it's gonna be a bit surprising at times how the how it comes together that this would go come down here but the handle actually is a big part of how this looks so check the curve here check the curve here and go around and then you have the back side is what i'm seeing you might want to take your paper out of the spiral i'm having trouble getting the edge there uh, my hand keeps hitting it. So that might be something to prepare for. And again, I'm just roughing this in so that when I come back, I can tighten this up. So don't turn it in looking like this. You need to go back, spend some time. And I will be able to tell if you spent 10 minutes or an hour. Um, it's it's pretty obvious. You know, if I just scribbled in what I have here and said that's that's good enough, you can do better anyone can draw neatly and with with enough time fill in the details enough that it would look okay so this is this and the shapes are warm-up exercises to get you comfortable drawing and there's a little dip in the handle so i'm trying to capture that as well as i'm talking here uh, and matching that up so these, these are warm ups. This is getting you comfortable drawing using the pencils. You can have a very sharp pencil and draw very darkly. Uh, as you can see here, if I was going to finalize this, I can do the side of the pencil and shade. Now you do have to think, how does this translate from black to white? black and white uh, from color as well as capturing the different tones this is a, a bit of a purple on top as well as being darker so you're you i also have some shading so if i i did the edge of my pencil that would help uh, get large areas of of shaded uh, material as well as the the change in color you want to capture the change in color so really with this being red and purple, the whole thing should be filled in as well as outlined, you know, getting that outside shape settled and get that finalized. But you also need to color in. And this is a mistake a lot of people in the in this drawing class make is just leaving it at the, the outline. Sure, it looks okay, but that's not what we're doing. We're looking at this not as a coloring book to fill in someone else to fill in you need to fill this in i'm also seeing uh like a highlight so i might want to just leave out this portion here is white and then color in around it to fill that in so you do want to capture the lights and the dark so and and maybe you go back with a an eraser to capture those dark areas and fill in some of these uh, bumps that uh, is was caused by the making of the of the mug, and then fill in lighter areas. I'm seeing a bit of a of an area here that's whiter, light white area, and then the rest would be filled in darker. And of course, you know the bottom area that would be quite dark, and in shadow. So I would want to neatly fill that in. So I think the biggest mistake is not filling in the entire object. It, going forward in our other assignments, you will be expected to either redraw or redesign and some different uh, layouts. You will need to be able to fill in that what you see. And actually, this this is a bit harsher uh, shadow, so I might want to come back and erase all of that. 
and just fill this in darker you know where this is quite dark you can even say what am i seeing on this that's the darkest area and make that black and then go from there where's the lightest the lightest i'm seeing a um, a reflection here and here and here because of the light source so you want to be conscious of that as well so consider this kind of a warm-up but do try to make it as neat as possible. There's no reason to be messy, even if you're not the best artist. And I see that's got a bit of a lip and come up here like that. And it, it'll be an accomplishment if you spent the, the time and really make it look like the object that you're trying to capture. And, and consider that some lines might peter out into a, a shadow or into um, a highlight. So keep that in mind as well as you're going through each portion. So I would suggest doing the overall shape, making sure the proportions, make it a good size, most of the paper compared to your object and making sure that's proportionate and then go in with some detail. You may do piece by piece, just focusing on the rim and these darker areas. I've got some different purple areas that are a little darker and uh, not, not completely um, solid. Uh, I see a bunch of rings on the inside from where it was, how it was made. And I see some light areas where it wasn't, the glazing wasn't, uh, complete. So I might block that out and then come back in and, and fill that in darker. And of course, follow your contours. So if you're doing some shading here, make sure that your shading follows that contour. And of course, if you know you don't like a line after a while, go back with an eraser and make sure that that's removed. So it's a nice, neat drawing that you're turning into me. And you would just go along and do the whole object. And again, remember to sharpen your pencil periodically if you need a, a really dark line. And then use the side of the pencil to um, get some softer uh, look, uh, a softer look, and to cover large areas uh, quickly.